Hi everyone, in our last video we had a quick overview of the Internet Computer Protocol and in this video we are going to have an introduction to the concepts where we dig deeper. So let's see what is waiting for us. First, we are going to talk about the canisters which is followed by the nodes and subnets. Then, we are going to talk about chain key cryptography. Next, we have the database versus blockchain comparison. And finally, as usual, we will have our conclusion. So, what are canisters? Canisters are the fundamental building blocks of internet computer acting as both the storage units and computational entities. When we refer to the canisters as the fundamental building blocks of the internet computer, we mean that they are the core units that make up its infrastructure. They serve dual purposes, they are both the storage units and the computational entities. This means that they not only hold data, but also have capabilities to perform computations, which is a unique feature that differentiates the internet computer from traditional blockchains. Canisters are autonomous, scalable, interactable, implying that they operate independently, can adjust their capacity based on demand, and can interact with other canisters or external entities. They run WebAssembly bytecode, which is a binary instruction format that allows them to execute code at near native speed. Housing both the data and the code implies that canisters encapsulate the state of functionality of a software service, which streamlines the development process on the internet computer. Now, let's look at the advantages of canisters over smart contracts. Canisters can run at web speed, meaning they can produce blocks and finalize transactions in milliseconds, and without compromising security or decentralization. Canisters can scale up or down depending on the demand, meaning they can adjust their resource consumption and performance dynamically. Canisters can communicate with each other and with other blockchains through message passing, meaning they can interoperate seamlessly and efficiently. Canisters can persist their state across upgrades and reboots, meaning they can maintain their data and functionality without interruption. Now, Let's look at the intercanister communication, which is a crucial part of the Internet Computer Protocol. The Internet Computer's multi-subnet architecture allows canisters on different subnets to communicate with each other seamlessly, similar to traditional microservices architecture, fully on-chain, which is very important to have a full functional replacement for traditional systems. Canisters communicate via asynchronous messages allowing the internet computer to scale by adding more subnets. Since we have a system here which is not fixed, which can grow on demand, this becomes a very very important feature. Now let's look at a specific canister, which is the management canister in internet computer. This is not an actual canister with isolated state and WebAssembly code. Management canister address with the specific address known as empty blob. Canisters can interact with the Internet Computer Management Canister via intercanister calls. So, let's look at the restrictions of the Management Canister. Our first restriction is that most methods only permit the controllers to call them. Calls to raw, rand and deposit cycles are never accepted as ingress messages. Now that we know about the canisters and Management Canister, let's look at the nodes. So, nodes are the machines that are running the core internet computer protocol. When we refer to nodes, we are talking about individual computers that participate in the internet computer network. Each of these computers runs the core internet computer protocol. This protocol governs how nodes communicate and interact with one another. So, it actually sets the rules of the game, so to speak. Just like how in a game of chess, all players must follow the same rules for how pieces move, in the Internet Computer Network, all nodes follow the same protocol for how they send, receive and process information. This uniform adherence to the same protocol across all nodes helps to ensure the security and consistency of the network. Nodes are deployed in globally distributed data centers. The nodes we just talked about aren't all gathered together in one physical location. Instead, they are spread out across multiple data centers around the world. This is what we mean by globally distributed. These data centers can be thought as a large warehouse filled with servers located in various countries and regions. By distributing the nodes in this way, the internet computer can provide a number of benefits. For instance, it enhances the resilience of the network because a problem at one data center won't take down the entire network. It also improves the speed and performance of the network because users can connect to a node 
this geographically close to them, reducing the time it takes for data to travel back and forth. So this is like a system that we are using today. If you use traditional web service provider like an Amazon, then the option that we are going to have is very similar to this one. So it's very important for Internet Computer Protocol to give this opportunity to users so that it can run on high speeds and performance as we are doing today, but on a decentralized system. Lastly, this global distribution contributes to the decentralization of the network, a key principle blockchain technology, as it prevents any single entity or region from having too much control over the network. That being said, it is crucial to note that node providers operate their nodes within data centers, but the data centers themselves typically do not run nodes. Now, let's look at the importance of these node distribution. Firstly, it's important because no single entity should have the power to significantly disrupt the network. This principle was challenged in the Hetzner incident. Hetzner, a popular hosting service, banned Ethereum nodes. This action effectively removed a substantial portion of the Ethereum's network nodes, leading to concerns about network stability and decentralization. And as we can see, decentralization is very, very crucial for any blockchain and it's the center principle of Internet Computer Protocol. Now, let's look at the subnets. The multi-subnet architecture of Internet Computer allows for seamless communication between smart contracts on different subnets, enabling the Internet Computer to scale practically without limits. Each subnet operates a blockchain-based replicated state machine, making progress independently but communicating asynchronously with other subnets. The Internet Computer offers various types of subnets each designed with specific properties that cater to different use cases. Now let's look at these subnet types. First, we have the system subnets. These subnets are reserved for canisters that are an integral part of the internet computer. Typically, canisters on these subnets are controlled by the NNS and they don't pay cycles. Users cannot deploy canisters on those subnets. For that, we have the application subnets. These are the default subnets that users can deploy canisters to. But if a user does not provide any specific requirements, a random application subnet is chosen as the destination to create the canister. On top of these basic types, there are also specialized types of subnets that offer certain additional properties that might be useful to decentralized applications. The first such specialized type is fiduciary which is essentially a larger version of an application subnet. Having more nodes provides better security and guarantees to decentralized applications running on a fiduciary subnet at the expense of being more expensive in terms of cycles cost. Now, let's learn about chain key cryptography. Subnets and their communication between each other depend on a set of innovative cryptographic protocols known as chain key cryptography. This cryptographic approach enables subnets to authenticate user request responses, maintaining subnet state, and exchange messages between subnets in a fully decentralized manner. Now, let's look how ICP works with chain key cryptography. First, a replica can join a subnet by starting from the most recent checkpoint or leave at any point in time. Threshold keys of the subnet are periodically reshared between the current nodes of the subnet. Membership changes and key resharing do not affect the public key of any subnet. Periodically, previous blocks are pruned from each subnet blockchain to prevent storage from growing infinitely. Now, let's look at the network nervous system, which we know from our last video again to understand how it works with ICP and what it brings to the table. Again, NNS is an open algorithmic system governing the internet computer blockchain, which we can say it behaves as one of the world's biggest DAOs, which we call decentralized autonomous organizations. And its further functionalities are upgrading the internet's computer protocol, managing software running on node machines, and summiting blockchain to increase capacity. Now, as a conclusion, with its core components including canisters, nodes, subnets, chain key cryptography, and the network nervous system, Internet Computer provides a in robust and scalable ecosystem. Data centers globally host nodes, 
which form the backbone of the internet computer's infrastructure, ensuring high availability and fault tolerance. The vision of the internet computer is to democratize the digital landscape, fostering innovation and data sovereignty. That's all for this video. Thank you very much and I will see you on our next video where we are going to talk about internet computer architecture.